This is Way 31 Law Call. Good evening and welcome to Way 31 Law Call. I'm Sharon Doviet. Tonight it's Ask Us Anything night. So if you've got a legal question on any issue, this is your chance to call in or text in. Call in to 256-536-0077. We're taking your calls live on the air or you can also text to that same number. We've got some of your texts lined up. You can also email a question any day of the week. You send it to lawcall at waytv.com. And when we get to a show that's on point, we pull out some of your questions and we'll have some of your questions tonight. Getting us started tonight. Heath Brooks is here from Timberlake League and Brooks. Good to have you here. Good to be here to ask any question that you ask can call us, us anything. with. That's right. So these guys do personal injury cases, but they know a lot about a lot of things. We do. I do family law, so we're looking forward to hearing what your questions are tonight. That's right. And before we get started with your questions, we'd like to pull out a video that we've we've found. This one is quite interesting. So, you know, folks are driving around. In this case, you're looking out the front window of a concrete delivery truck. Uh -oh. And you don't want to be that SUV right there. Oh. Look at that. Doesn't it look like a oh, movie? A no, movie scene. No, no. So, yeah. fortunately, I think everybody inside that vehicle is going to be okay, but I don't think the vehicle is going to be okay. They're, they're encased in concrete. Yeah. I, I don't think you can really, really blame the concrete truck there. The fellow looks like he pulled out in front of him and. You know, now maybe they should have, maybe there should be some way to keep the concrete from spilling out if you gotta stop quickly. Yeah. That's something yeah. that, that's kind of weird. But, uh, but I, I, you know, I wouldn't be pulling out in front of a concrete truck. That's yeah. just generally not a good idea. Choose wisely. L likely, particularly in Alabama, it's probably gonna be on them. We invite all your calls and questions this week. It's Ask Us Anything Night, 256-536-0077. You can call or you can text in. We got this text question. Okay, is it better to file for a pardon or an expungement after you've been convicted of a felony and served your prison time? What yeah, you, you know, the, two different things here. We hear all of, all the time about a presidential pardon. Yes. You know, the president's pardon, it, or sometimes the governor Go, the will governor, pardon or somebody. The governor, the turkey, usually and that, that's something. You, that, that's the difference. If it's a federal crime, okay. then the president can pardon someone. That that doesn't mean that, they're, that the president's declaring you innocent or guilty. That means you are pardoned. In other words, you no longer have to have a penalty for the crime okay. that you committed. Uh, it's basically overriding the decision of a jury. The state, uh, the sta in the state, it would be the governor who has the ability to pardon an individual for state crimes. And that's for a pardon. But when you're talking about an expungement, under Alabama law, there are a very um, small number of crimes that you can have expunged from your record. And what that means is an expungement means that it is taken off your record, uh, whatever crime you committed, as if you never had committed it. So a pardon sticks with you an expungement doesn't. And that's really the thing to know. So if you've got a decision whether to file for a pardon or file for an expungement, if you're filing for a pardon, that's generally a, a worse crime okay. than, than an expungement. Okay. We also, we have some email questions coming in. We had this one from Todd. Todd says, I had a contractor do work at my home. This was almost two years ago. Their equipment tore up the dirt outside and exposed the electrical wire going to my pool. Well, I didn't see it, and I tripped over the wire. I messed up both my wrists, but I didn't get an MRI for a few months when the pain started getting worse. I ended up needing surgery. My question is, with a two-year statute of limitations, does the clock start when I fell or when I found out I needed surgery? And is the contractor liable? So there's a couple things to, to unpack here. The first thing is, is a time limit. In, yep. in Alabama, you have two years from the date that a part that you're injured or that the party was negligent to actually file a lawsuit. So if, if this contractor was negligent and it had been two and a half, three years before you actually got injured, under Alabama law, we have what's called the discovery rule that sometimes if you don't discover the negligent conduct, then you get a six month get out of jail free card where you can actually file a lawsuit, uh, it, it, even though two years may have elapsed. I had a similar situation to this some time ago where there was a local cable company that had left a cable draped in somebody's backyard. The grass kind of grew around it and then they tripped and they fell over that, that cord and it had been it had been six months before, since this this had been this this cable had been laid in this grass, and we were able to argue that hey look you know yes it was somebody's backyard but it was winter time the grass had grown over it he didn't have reason to know it was there and we could ultimately hold that contract that contractor responsible for leaving that cable there, uh, you know and it, it, when you when you when you expose wire 
or when you, you know, when you lay down wire, you have a responsibility to make sure that that wire is safely secured in the ground. And, and th that, that's happened a number of times over the course of my practice where somebody has tripped over a wire, wire's not been properly buried, and those things can be very, very bad injuries. Blown Achilles tendons, broken arms. It, it can lead to devastating effects because nobody's looking for it in their yeah. yard. We've got Dawn on the line with a question from Huntsville. Hi, Dawn. Thanks for calling. What's your question tonight? Mm, hi there. Hey, Dawn. Um, my question is regarding a wheel. Okay. And the jewelry was wheeled to a family member, but before the deceased passed away, that piece of jewelry was given to another family member. Gotcha. And now the giver or the original owner of the jewelry is passed away. And now me being the owner or the possessor of the jewelry is being told I need to give it back to the person whose name is on the will. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people will write wills and they'll put something in there that when when they actually pass away, it doesn't exist yeah, anymore. That's, so. that's right. I mean, that, that's the thing about a will. A will is a it, is, is really a, a future interest. It doesn't, it, you don't have any interest in anything that is left in a will until somebody passes away. So if I have a car and I leave the car to my daughter in my will, but then I sell my car, then my daughter can't go to the dealership I sold it for and say, hey, look, my daddy left the car in the will and I know <laughs> he sold it six months ago, but you're gonna have to give it back. I want it back. Yeah, that, that's, uh, uh, what, what is left in a will is just a future your interest if it if it is there at the time that the person who left it in their will passes away then it passes with the estate uh, you know there are some other issues but potentially if somebody is coerced the the individual into giving them something prior to the will when they don't have the mental capacity to give things away there are some arguments and a lot of those things are oftentimes litigated in court but but if it's something that was left in the will and then the person who left it in the will gave it away long before they passed away or before they passed away at all, then generally, uh, you know, it, it doesn't pass with the will. We got a text question in, how long after a wreck would you need to contact a lawyer? My doctor bills keep going up, co-pays are adding up, and the insurance company will not reimburse each time I have to go to the doctor. Um, I have to complete all, do I have to complete all services before getting reimbursed? So. How fast do you need to go see a lawyer? You know, it, it, if with an injury, and, and, and just if, it, even if there's not an injury, the best thing to do is to go ahead and call a lawyer and get some advice about how you need to move forward. Because one of the things when, when one of the things about insurance companies is insurance companies generally don't pay piecemeal. In other words, if you are, are injured in a wreck or you're injured in a trucking accident or you're injured by falling in a store, whatever the case may be, then the, the insurance company is not going to pay out a claim until you've received all your medical treatment, have accumulated all your medical bills, and then you reach a global settlement uh, at the end. And, and of course, you know, you may have thousands of dollars in medical bills that have accumulated by that point in time. So it's essential because it's essential to contact a lawyer about how you may want to try to deal with those medical bills while a case is being resolved because there are some ways you can deal with those medical bills okay. that can help you keep any kind of creditors off your back or keep those bills from going on your credit report, okay. which is can be pretty damaging. And it, it can be tempting for people to settle kind of early, right? That's and, right. and not everything yeah. has come through. You need to be sure that yeah. all your bills are in because uh, you don't know what to take as the deal. I always say get a look at all your cards before you place a bet. You, if, you, if you're playing five card poker, make sure you have all five of those cards. You can't just have four. You got to make sure that you're better because if you resolve a case, once you resolve a case, it's resolved. You can't go back and say, hey, I had to have a back surgery or hey, I, my knee still hurts and try to get some more a recovery from an insurance company. So make sure when you get in a wreck, contact a lawyer. That's the best thing to do. Generally, we'll talk to you. It won't cost you a nickel and we can give you free advice about how you may want to move forward. We've got Steve on the line with a question from Moulton. Steve, thanks for calling. What's your question tonight? Hey, I was saying, what it was if you uh, had a, uh, got born out on the charge. Okay. And then you, uh, you're an indicted. And why did the grand jury have you back up? Had to pay uh, another bond. 
I have seen that before where somebody bonds out one time and it, it comes back and you get rearrested and have to bond out again. I've, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, you know, that, that's up to the, ju the discretion of the court. I mean, you know, that's, that's one thing that, that when, the, when the judge issues a bond and, and you, you got to get bonded again for, for a, you know, a different crime or have to go back to court, the judge, it, ju the judge makes that decision. Uh, you know, my suggestion to you is make sure you contact a good criminal lawyer who's, who is familiar with the area and familiar with the court that can, that can have a good conversation with the judge and maybe with a district attorney to help you out there. Okay. We're going to take a break. Be right back. It's Ask Us Anything Night. I see a family law question coming up, so I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. You're watching Way 31 Law Call. Your rights, your calls, live. Presented by the Tennessee Valley's award-winning personal injury and wrongful death law firm, Timberlake, League & Brooks. Featuring the knowledge and experience of Attorney Michael Timberlake, Attorney Will League, Attorney Heath Brooks, Attorney William Maservi, and hosted by broadcaster and family law attorney Sharon Doviet. This is Way 31 Law Call. Welcome back to Law Call. It's Ask Us Anything Night tonight. We've got all kinds of questions coming in. Heath Brooks is here from Timberlake League and That's Brooks. Right. And we've got callers waiting. June is on the line with a question from Albertville. Hi, June. Thanks for calling. What's your question Hi. tonight? Hi. <laughs> yes, I have a question. Uh, my mother passed away in 2015. Okay. And uh, my sisters and brothers were there when she passed. I was not able to go. I had a fracture in my back. But my mother left a will. Uh, and she lived in a prestigious place. Okay. What I'm calling about, how can I contest a will as far as knowing what was uh, supposed to come to the children? So tw she passed in 2015. I think there's, has it been probated? Has everything gone through or are you trying to probate a will that's that old? Well, uh, I guess it was probably my sister. One of my sisters was uh, the power of attorney. The okay. The but I can't get any information out of them. I've been trying. and Okay. Your well, probate court ought to be able to yeah. give you uh, some information. That's exactly right. Go, to, go down. I don't know what county you're in, but go down to the county probate court, and you, you should go to the, be able to go to the clerk of the probate court, and you can pull the will, and you should be able to, to find out the probated will, and, and there should be a distribution of assets included with the will. So you should be able to find out where all of the assets of your mo mother went. Uh, you know, there should be an accounting of all that. Uh, so that, that, that's the easiest answer to your question. If the will hasn't been probated, that's a whole nother can of worms. But first things first is go down to the probate court and see if you can't get a copy of the probated will from the, from the clerk of the probate court. We got a lot of will questions. I think Joy from Scottsboro is on the line with another will question. Joy, we'll give it our best shot. What's That's your right. question tonight? Hi, Joy, are you with us from Scottsboro? We may have lost her. Okay, we got this text message. Um, a friend was with a man, they never married, but they've got three children together, so neither one has controlling custody. She's got them one week and he's got them the next. How does she go about getting controlling custody to make decisions on things like school and doctor, or can she? And are there lawyers that can help? She's low income. Ah, so, yeah, okay. family law, okay. Yes, she can file a petition and she can ask for either sole physical custody or she can ask for some division of the custody and the and for legal custody the the authority to make those ultimate decisions because you're right right now they've got equal control and until you get an order from the court it's kind of whoever gets there first right so yeah. she can file something it's hard to get free, low-cost assistance with that if there's not any kind of a dangerous circumstance? That's what I was about to ask. When you have kids involved, do you need a lawyer for something like that? You need a lawyer, ideally. There are some, like legal aid, uh, we don't know where this this uh, text is coming from. Some counties have got some assistance, but many of them really only help if there's a danger. You know, there's okay. a, 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 a protection from abuse situation there's abuse some going on but you could file something on your own on your own as well the clerk's mm. office sometimes has some sample uh, documents that you could look at so either give it a try or contact a family law attorney and get something the sooner the better so three kids if they're not in school yet 
you need to get this before school comes up because that's going to be a big issue for you. Medical things, school issues, always big. Oh, yeah. Have we got Joy from Scottsboro back? Hi, Joy. Thanks for calling. What's your question tonight? Nope. Let's talk a little bit about flood insurance, all yeah. the hurricanes and everything going on. And I'm hearing that a lot of people are, they're not covered because it's a flood. And That's right. flood insurance is not something everybody has. This has been devastating. The, 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 the folks up in North Carolina, Virginia, my friends, some over in Georgia, uh, you know, Virgi um, all, all over the southeastern United States, down in Florida, are dealing with home damage, they're dealing with property damage, they're dealing with business loss damages, all sorts of, uh, of problems. And, you know, one of the things, uh, particularly, it, you know, when you're looking in North Carolina and you're looking at some of, uh, of, the, of the southeastern states, not Florida, they, they don't typically deal with the kinds of floods they, they've had to deal with. And so flood insurance is, is oftentimes not on the top of these folks' minds. You know, they're living in the mountains. I mean, you know, who, who, who thinks <laughs> who it's going to flood, flood in the mountains? You know, the mountains. And, I'm, and I'm looking at, I'm looking on the, I live on the side of a hill. I'm looking at my side of my hill. And I'm like, do I need flood insurance? Well, the reality is, is that when you, when you buy insurance from a homeowner's insurance company, whatever company it is, very, very, very rare for that policy of insurance to include flood insurance in general coverage. So you may think that if my home gets flooded by a hurricane, I'm gonna be covered, I got homeowner's insurance. But typically, you haven't read the fine print and flood insurance is not included in that insurance. You can pay for it. You can call your insurance company up, particularly in higher areas, generally it's not that expensive. So don't assume you have flood insurance. Make sure you get your policy, make sure of your coverages. You know, another thing, our earthquake insurance is not included in, in insurance policies. And believe it or not, in North Alabama, <laughs> Tennessee, North Georgia, we get earthquakes. Yeah, we're You know, that cause damage to property. So, you know, it's very cheap insurance, but you need to make sure homeowner's insurance doesn't cover everything. It covers, very, uh, you know, the things that are included in the actual policy. So make sure you got flood insurance and, and those kinds of things in case the worst happens. We got this email question from Paul. Paul says, I loaned somebody in Florida $500 so they could pay their rent. I hardly know him, but I wanted to help. I have text where he said he'd pay me back. Two weeks later, well, the, after weeks of not hearing, I contacted him. He refuses to pay and says, I'm harassing him. I call the police down there and they say I need to go to civil court. What's the best course of action for being out of state? Their court clerk told me I have to appear in person. Yeah. That's a long way to go, over $500. That's it may right. not be worth it. You know, and that's one thing you, you do. Are you putting good money after bad? The reality is, is that in, 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 according to the letter of the law, you have a contract. You loan somebody money, they agreed to pay you back. You know, now they haven't paid you back, they owe you money. And so you can file a claim in, in the appropriate court where that agreement was reached to try to get your $500 back. Maybe Florida allows you to get attorney's fees back too if you have to hire a lawyer. But, or, or, you know, incidental charges like uh, maybe some, some interest on the money that you loan that hasn't been paid back. Reality is, is that driving down to Florida, you may spend more gas money <laughs> getting down there and getting back than getting your $500 yep. back. Hotel so, for sure. Yeah, and, and local lawyers here, we can't, unless you're licensed also in Florida, you can't, you can't practice down in Florida. I can't practice down in Florida. I'm licensed in Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama. Yeah. So. Good luck with it, though. Um, let's talk a little bit about car insurance. Yeah. So a lot of car insurance companies are urging people to install these little devices, and you have an uh, app on your phone, and they say, we'll, we'll lower your insurance cost if we see that you're a good driver. And it's very tempting to do that. Are, is that in our best interest? You know, I don't you know the answer to that. And we were talking about that earlier. It, it gives me it, it gives me pause because it means somebody is tracking your vehicle. And, and I don't know, are they just tracking your speed? Or are they tracking your, your difficulty braking? I can tell you that in my line of work, and I've been doing this for, for 17, 18 years now, in my line of work, I am very, very, very leery of insurance companies offering something like that as a benefit to me. It seems like that. <laughs> 
that's a benefit to an insurance company and it gives them some sort of grounds to increase your insurance rates. You know, I, I'd like to see a lot more research on that over the course of the next 10 or 15 years to see if that's effectively uh, lowering insurance rates for folks or if there's a net increase. And I think those statistics will come out once it plays out with more people taking advantage of it. But my, my thought is, is I'm not going to put a tracking device in my car. So, you know, that's where I am. I wonder if lawyers on the other side of accidents are going to start trying to subpoena those records, too. Yeah, Right? Start exactly. asking for it and, exactly. and see what they were doing the sure. minute before. Sure. You can get certain information from somebody's cell phone, right, for well, car that, accidents? Well, that's right. You can get information from cell phones. I'll tell you another thing that, that um, insurance companies now are subpoenaing is your tracking devices, your Apple iPhone data or your Apple Watch data, or if you've got data in your shoes where you, if you say, if you say hey, look, I'm not getting a lot of exercise, you know, because I was injured in this car wreck, but then your Apple Watch says you've been exercising 15,000 oh. steps a day since the collision. Do you, you know, that's some information that, that insurance companies are now getting. Interesting. Yeah. Are they asking for your Fitbit stuff? Fitbit, Fitbit stuff, Fitbit and everything. all of that. That's you know, interesting. Facebook posts, you know, that's one thing that we oh, really yeah. deal with. And, and, and when it comes to Facebook world, we have Facebook world and then we have real world. And in the Facebook world, nobody really wants to, to put a bad picture out there of themselves. So you may feel terrible following a fall in a store or following an accident or following a medical situation. But, but you don't want the, the world to know. You want the world to know that you're moving on and you're feeling better. So maybe you take a picture of yourself smiling and it was the only time of the day you ever smiled and you put that up on Facebook. Well, I can tell you right now that if you get into litigation because of whatever happened to you, a car accident, a fall, the insurance company's lawyers are going to get that. And they're going to take that Facebook post and they're going to plaster it in front of a jury or they're going to plaster it in front of their insurance adjuster. And they're going to say, you're not hurt. Look, here, you're smiling. And that's because in the Facebook world, it is a lot different than the real world, than the, the other 23 hours and, uh, you know, and, and 59 minutes that you were in bed not doing anything at all. So be very careful about what you're posting on Instagram, Facebook. Any, any kind of social media accounts because it can and it will be used against you. Family law attorneys love those posts too. I bet you do. We, uh, we are seeing an uptick in, the, in people who are saying negative things about their ex mm -hmm. and it's against orders. Oh, so yeah. orders say don't harass each other and specific things not to do and there you are doing it. Got some jail time for somebody right, for right. their Facebook book. Yeah. Books. Yeah. The best thing to do is just if you're involved in litigation of any kind at all, just, just don't do Facebook. Yeah. We're going to take a break. Be right back. Answer more of your questions. Ask us anything night. If you didn't get your questions answered tonight, here's how to get in touch with Heath Brooks with Timberlake League and Brooks. They are personal injury attorneys. So everything from car accidents to nursing home negligence. 256-536-0770 or 800-804-2502. The website is law-injury.com. And if you like them on Facebook, you can learn more about the law that way. And Sharon W. does family law, that's divorces, that's child uh, custody, that's adoptions. She can be reached at 256-539-7337 at SharonFamilyLaw.com. Last text question for tonight, can a will be changed without the children knowing? Short answer is yes, it can. You don't have to tell anyone when you change your own personal will. Do, do it whatever you want to that's do. That's right. You can lie to them too, and that that's happens right. sometimes. That's right. You can change your will. It's your will. Thanks for all your questions. We'll see you next week. Have a good night.